Good morning, welcome to yet another bow review. I know it's quite a lot recently, but what can I do? We have a lot of bows here, so we of course will review them and today because you asked for it. I did a review a while ago. It was a Patreon bow. This time I ordered it for myself and we said we want to see another review. The, who can guess it? Exactly. The Assyrian bow, biocomposite by Grosje. <clears throat> I thought I should get one time a bow for myself and this is the one. So what can I tell you? I said Grosje bow, Assyrian, Assyrian design. It's a biocomposite laminated. What does biocomposite now mean? Last time somebody asked again. It's a laminated bow. The core is wood. The belly is pressed horn, is some kind of processed horn. I don't know exactly how it's done. And the back is a pressed sinew plate. So we have these three layers glued together. In the glue there is fiber strengthening to make this all a bit more, but it's a modern glue, not an old time glue. Uh, and it's a little more flat. The, the, the real composite bow would be had be a little wider limbs because of the thicker horn and stuff like this. But in this way you combine the benefits of the composite bow, this smooth draw, no vibration, but still the, the ease of use of a normal laminated bow in regards of having the tiller and having everything nice and set up. So that's why I really like them. And of course I can understand why some people don't like what Grosje is doing, but it is like it is. So the bow has a length of 57 inches, strung 53 inches, has a brace height of 8 inches. You can have this bow from 30 to 65 pounds. This one is a 42 pound. The max draw is 33 inches and I think the arrow weight is 8 gram per pound, but I don't know anymore. Because I don't know. And what you get, I forgot it now, of course you get a bow, a string, a sleeve and a documentation with a warranty card, but I forgot it now because I'm not so organized right now. This one is easy, has nice straight lines and only a nice long curve out there. 54 and a half. And the arrow pass just above this nice handle is 23 millimeters, very narrow. I like that combined with an 8 inch brace head. Mm. So this is what you get. So, you have here the horns here, uh, the woods here. We have a, a different horn as an inlet, but I'll show you then the details obviously. A wrapping here for protection, a wrapping here for safety reasons, then the big wraps on both sides of the handle. And with this nice handle wrap, first I thought yeah, it looks a little weird, but it feels as you have here a solid grip on the bow. So like it like it a lot but we need to string this pretty one now so this is the bottom one this is the top one we string it like the pros do look i forgot now what is the top part this one see put it on the top limb hold the string on the limb step over it put the lower limb on your chin so this boy is a little longer but it still should work oh come on it's only 42 but of course, it's still kind of sinew. Needs a few shots to warm up, maybe. So, so stringing in this way is it's okay. Look at this pretty bow. Huh? Has no weight to it. But seven and three quarter, so it could be a little shorter the string. In this direction, flex is quite stiff. I mean, it's only 42 pounds, but these materials make it stiff, but still oh, nothing. See, in this direction, you need to force the bow. Wow. But of course, this material weighs a little, so we are at, well, it's not so much, 425. And the draw experience of this bow is, <laughs> is this out? 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and still no stacking. I see 
which arrows I have. Of course, I have not the right length and the right weight, but we do what we can with what we have. We start, these are 34 inches and 540 grains. So they would be a little heavy and a little too long. But look at this. <laughs> a little too heavy. So, a little cutter, and you don't hear the arrow slapping on the bow. Oh, ow! Even through the protector. These most probably are the best ones. They are 32 and uh, almost 33. And they have 450 grain and 460, I guess, would be something like the right arrow weight. <laughs> yep. These are Ali bows, I only put a light weight. Oh, tips on it, oh, holy cow. I didn't say that. Ah, once you. Oh, it's a bit warm up. And there are 400 grain, the Sungus, but only 32 inches, so we don't throw fully. I need to see what it does. Kicks a little. Oh. Is it still Robin Hood? No. So, 400 grain is too lightweight, then you feel it in the hand. 450 to 500 grain, I think works, but we see what the max poundage of the bow is. I only know that it's 42 at 28. And forgive me that I look stupid again. I still don't own a quiver. Uh, 20 meters with the 540 grain. Let's see what it does out of the box. Center. But you see them flying, so it's not the fastest with these arrows. Center. Almost center. 540 grain. Oh, I go to the left. They are, I think they're a little weaker, the spine. Oh, yeah, you get there. Once you have your set of arrows and you always shoot the same, it's not a problem. 400 spine and 400 grain. <laughs> Ow, center, but it hurts. I mean, not that I hit the center, but in the... Ah, this one hurts a little. Let's see if we do Khatra. Khatra, if it gets better. A little, but you still feel it's a 400 gram, definitely a little too lightweight. Let's see. 28, 41, at 30. There we are, 45, at 32. Fifty and at thirty-three, forty-five, fifty. This is thirty-three roughly. Fifty-two and a half. So well, yeah, but you see that it's two and a half pounds every inch. This is a master class of bow building. Two and a half inches constantly through. Wow. So let's see, twenty-eight. Of course, the bow is a little longer, but has not aggressive sears at all. I guess we're already beyond. Yes, we're already beyond the 60 degree string angle. So we are at 27 inches. We have the string angle. But with this bow, 30. Oh, look at this. There's no problem. Whatsoever. 
and 32. I don't have a 33 pack, so a little more than your 33. Beautiful. Look. These pretty sears, nice and made, very thin. Look at these thin sears. There's no weight at all at the sears. We have the small reinforcement inside, then directly underneath the wrapping. Another wrapping and the description. The pressed horn wrapping. This handle, which totally makes sense, feels really good. And of course, on the back, you have your pressed horn plate. It's wow, beautiful as it is. 540, uh, yes, 540 grain. Seventy-eight, hundred ninety-five, <laughs> hundred eighty-one. We take a middle of this one. Now I guess kind of the recommend a little too lightweight, but yeah, it's hot. One hundred eighty-seven. They are a little too short, 196, and you know what, 400 grain, only that you know what they are doing, but they're only 32 inches long, 199, 198, <laughs> 205. So this is what you get out with. It's pretty. It kicks every arrow and it's fast. So now I show you the curves again and tell you something about hand choke and vibration while I shoot it. These arrows are 34 inches so they're a little too long. But look at this. It's no problem even almost 34 inches. So 540 grain, how does it feel? You feel a little ding, but it's not so. And a croup, fine. 450, it's a little too lightweight. It's a little under eight grain. These arrows are almost 23, so fine. Ah, ooh, then you hear it already. But nice. Isn't it got warm? That's why. A little cut, and it's fine. But you feel it a little, so you feel it. Four hundred. 432 <laughs> kicks arrows away. You feel it a little bit. It's, it's part of the game. And I need to refletch my arrows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you do a little, but you feel it. So 400 grain, you feel definitely. 450, you still feel. But you will need a few shots with this bow. So let's see, let's shoot them randomly. Let's see what they're doing. See, that's why I don't need a quiver, but uh, I look so no smart. Fine. <laughs> Knock is too wide. It's not good. The strings are very thin, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would have no problem shooting them with 400 grain. Yeah. See, that's why I need a quiver. Oh. Ah, yeah, four fifty, just fine. Five forty, a little heavy. Yeah, something in between, but even four hundred. Look, <laughs> no problem. <sighs> Four fifty. But every 
everything works. It's so you have no vibration. Oh, yeah, little wait. One, two. I think the brace side should be a little higher. We had eight inches. Let's change it and try it again. Sounds different. Yeah, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. But it's not it's not a lot. And with a few shots it gets better. Let's do it again with eight inch brace height, or at least a little more. We had seven and something. Now we have a bit more. Maybe it's not completely eight, but then the bow should be more silent. Let's see. 540. Oh, center shot. <laughs> yeah, they flex a little there too long and yeah, can't run the ring twist and it works. So 450. This boat rolls like there is no tomorrow. Oh, that was a bad shot. Focus. I did a Robin Hood. Ah, yo. 52, huh? 32 inches, 400 grain. Yeah, it works too. Gets, it's got better now, vibration wise and hand choke wise. Now, even the 400s don't hurt anymore. So you have a little, but it's gotten way better already. Hmm, nice. So I hope you see the curves. <laughs> Insane. So I think now the poke is broken in, so to say. So 32 inches, no problem. <gasps> nice. And now you don't feel it anymore. Interesting. Nice. And see, unlike a real horn bow, this bow is still straight. Like when I strung it and the tiller is the same. When you have a real horn bow after a few shots, you might need to check this. Here you have no problems completely string the bow and forget this and shoot. This is what I personally like more. Low maintenance. You don't need to care about the bow. So that's not the question. No. The question is the handle has a slightly bump on the back. Would it interfere with? I don't think so. So you see me the first time shooting three fingers this bow. It's fun. Get a little short air, is that too long obviously? Nice. Why not? Why not shooting three fingers? <laughs> Could you do it this way around? I guess so. Ooh, that sounded like a Robin Hood. Yeah, it sounded like a Robin Hood. Could you do this way around with this one? I mean, why not? That's everything you want. So if you only want to shoot 28 inches, it's fine. With your Mediterranean draw, this bow still kicks the arrows away. Then of course you can go a bit more lightweight because then it's only 42 pounds. But this bow is made for longer draw. Look, this is like, this is 32 and a half. And then let's see. <laughs> Again, a bow you don't want to put out of your hand. Katra string twist works really well with this bow. Of course, I said first learn your release, then katra, and then string twist. And then you will be even more amazed of a bow like this. And now back to the real world, rate, world rating because this is what you get usually from Groja a bow, a string, a sleeve, and this documentation, which is directly the warranty card. And it means, not five, 
bowstring sleeve documentation, three points. The handling, I need to try now again the stringing because it was a little awkward when I did it the other way. But this way, you have of course this extreme flex to overcome, but even look, I don't hold, you see it. I don't hold the limb, so I don't fear that the bow will twist in my hand. <coughs> easy. So, stringing, unstringing, easy. Only the other method was a little... But even if there's this flex in the bow, this deflex, you don't have to hold like other bows. You need to hold them that they don't twist while you string it. This one is stable. Five. And the build, you saw the details all already. And I showed you, but of course, when you step through and then you do that tissue is there, the build is so. Here I have so nothing to complain, and it looks raw, it looks like a weapon, so it's nothing shiny, nothing fancy, it's simply a tool, and a tool that really delivers. Needed a few shots that you got rid of this kick, and wait a sec. We are now at, yeah, still not there, seven and three quarters. So I don't know, you felt already, I felt already that it got better with a little more brace height. So I will put this bow on, you know what? Why should I do it later? We can have it now on video. Eight inches. So the string is a little long, Shaba. <coughs> And it didn't stretch over these shots, so usually they stretch a little. Now we have eight. Now we shoot the 400 and see what it does. Yeah, see, you didn't hear anything anymore. It needs eight inches brace height. Nothing anymore. So you don't. This, this weird noise is gone. You still have one, two, three, four, five seconds. You feel it a little in the handle too, but it's nothing annoying. And I think this one will disappear over the next few shots. So, built fine. Only make sure you have your brace side right. The basic feel, this handle, is incredible. So with this wrap around, looks a little very medieval style or whatever, but you have here, your fingers find so much of, of, of purchase to grip. You have a narrow arrow pass, eight inches brace side. It makes, it's almost a center shot bow. So, and for the rest, totally nothing. Five. I will do a new uh, rating system with 10 points in each section and then I will tell you 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 because these slightly nuances which don't bother me but people say 5, you always give 5, 5, 5, what can I do when a bow is good? In my opinion it gets 5 points, only when then you saw bows they don't reach some certain things like max draw or something, then you get 4 points or 3 points. But of course, most of the bows get five points because they're quite good. So I might change the rating system with 10 points and then you get eight, seven out of 10, nine out of 10, you have slightly, and then I would give this one now in the handling, most probably a nine out of 10 because the first time I strung it was a little knee. And then you get whatever, a different number and you know, but the draw experience is exceptional. Directly, first time strong, Look at this, and this is more than 33. This is a 34 inch arrow. See that? It's 34 inches, so there's no stacking whatsoever. And you saw the draw curve, the poundage goes every inch, two and a half pounds. It's five. And the shooting experience, you need a few shots. Now I think even with the higher brace side, it's easier. You need a few shots that you get used to and shoot the same arrows and don't mix the arrows and you know, and spine and whatever. It confuses yourself and you're shooting. So get a set of arrows, which works for this bow and for you. And then keep it and practice with the same arrows with this bow. And you will get after 
10, 20, 30 arrows groupings in every distance because you know and you feel what this bow is capable of doing once you're really focused and shoot and perform whatever you want to perform. <clears throat> this bow delivers in this way, gets another five points. And then we're a total at 28. And price value, 385 euros. I mean, it's okay for me. I would have no problem paying 500 for this bow, but Shabbat don't change the prices now. This bow delivers on so many levels. First of all, the optics, you get this sinew plate on the back, you know, and then this wrapping, you have wood in the middle, then you have this pressed horn here, this, I don't know if it's real horn or synthetic horn, whatever it is, but it looks simply incredible. So and this, how this bow looks like, how it's made, the knowledge which is built in is simply incredible. So there here you see all the knowledge from Shaba combined in a peak bow, which is, uh, I think for this price, one of the best bows out there. So for 380, what did I say, 385, show me a bow which performs better than this one, which has 200 foot per second, which draws without any stacking 33 inches and being that stable and you have no issues of shooting, of even if you shoot torque, whatever you want to do with this bow. So that's why for me, this price is way more than okay. I would give six points, but we have only five. This bow, you need to shoot it. So this is, um, and everybody who shot it so far loves this bow. This is what I can tell you. It's not only me. The only thing you need to make sure, all the standard knocks, see this is a normal standard bear pro knock, doesn't stick, doesn't click in. So you need to adjust your knocks because the string is very thin, coach knocks barely, but they at least manage a little. And these are strong. These are from Alipo. They knock, but not that much. So you need to adjust your knocks. You squish them a little, or if you have, you make your own wood knocks, make them a little more tight. The string and the surfing is very thin, or you double up the center serving, and then all these arrows would be no problem. But it's, you know, it's a, when you have a set of arrows, I simply use these arrows for different bows, for different string widths. You can do that. Usually I do it like this, but, and nowadays you don't want to show this anymore. <laughs> See, and now it's still, but it knocks now. Kind of, but you get the point. So adjust your knocks accordingly and you will have a lot of fun for 385 euros. I think, wow, simply, wow, get one. But don't get it now because Chaba needs to build for my patrons first a Korean bow biocomposite and a Manchu bow biocomposite and then you can build your Assyrian bows again. Okay, so don't order directly now. Wait a little until these bows for my patrons are finished. Thank you, Chaba, for building these incredible bows. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I did my 50,000 giveaway. Good luck to the one who will win the Kizil bow. And thank you all for subscribing, for sharing, for commenting. It's such a nice thing in this community to go on. Now some guy knows something, the other one knows something, and we collect all our knowledge. And this is how we grow together. And I like this a lot. Thank you very much for watching, and i catch you in the next one.